Can you do anything about it, you know, maybe going back in time and improving the most recent Star Wars films? Oh, uh, no, that's, that's <laughs> irreversible that, that, damage. That's, that's level three, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but you see, time travel actually is theoretically possible. Uh, uh, Stephen Hawking once said, where are the time travelers from the future taking my picture? Well, yeah. you know, we think maybe they're invisible. By then, time travelers will have invisibility. In fact, we may have it in a few decades. In which case, maybe they're all around us and we don't even know. Now, Einstein said that time is like a river and we're swept up by the meandering of this old man river. It speeds up and it slows down and we measure that every day with our GPS systems. Einstein was right, we measure them every day. However, the new wrinkle that's causing shock waves to reverberate through the community is the river of time can have whirlpools. The river of time may fork into two rivers in which case, time travel is now something we have to take seriously. Whirlpools and forking in the river of time. This means that we can build a time machine, perhaps, to wrap time into a pretzel, go backwards in time, and meet your teenage mother before you're born. Are now, you talking about Terminator? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> talking about Back to the Future. Oh, okay. Now, if she falls fine. in love with you, you're in deep doo-doo. Yeah, I was wondering, that's, is that, so that is possible, huh? It is theoretically possible. Now, <laughs> I don't say that any inventor tomorrow is going to invent a machine in their basement. The energy necessary to bend time into a pretzel would require the energy of a star. Well, isn't there a risk that, you know, the same risk that they talk about in Back to the Future and even in Terminator and all these movies that play with the time travel paradox, which is, isn't there a risk that going back permanently alters the timeline and, as you said, creates another fork? Well, like I said, if you go backwards in time and meet your teenage mother before you're born and she falls in love with you, you're in deep doo-doo. Because how can you be born if your teenage mother just fell in love with you? Well, the resolution to all these paradoxes is that the river of time can fork into two rivers. You have jumped stream. You've gone from one timeline to another timeline, and that woman who just fell in love with you looks like your mother, talks like your mother, is genetically equivalent to your mother, but is not your mother. Your mother gave birth to you. Your mother fell in love with your father, let's hope. Y this woman yeah. in front of you is your mother in a parallel universe. How do you, is there a way to, uh, so what you're implying is that Marty got stuck in a parallel universe. So mm -hmm. how do we know he ever came back to the real, you know, 1985? Well, we don't know for sure. There's a TV program called Sliders where people I've slide between universes and they always try to come back to the original timeline, right? Yeah. Well, if you watch the first show, a, little, a young boy reads a book and falls asleep and then the program starts. That book, by the way, is my book. <laughs> <laughs> hyperspace. <laughs> My book, Hyperspace, spawned a TV series called Sliders. I love that show. I remember it very well. Jerry O'Connell. So anyway, the point is that if you jump stream from one timeline to another, you've saved Abraham Lincoln from being assassinated, but it's not your Abraham Lincoln. History was meant to be in your universe. You cannot change your own past. You've changed somebody else's past. So that's how we resolve all time travel paradoxes. There are no paradoxes if you believe in a quantum theory of time. But you know that if you have a radio in your living room and it's, uh, you have all frequencies in your living room, BBC, Radio Moscow, ABC, but your radio is tuned to one frequency. You're, de you're, you're decohered from all the other frequencies. You're only coherent with one frequency. Right. We now believe that the universe is vibrating and that there are vibrations of different universes right in this room. There are the universes of dinosaurs because the comet didn't hit 65 million years ago. There are the wave function of aliens from outer space looking at the rubble that, of an Earth that already was destroyed, all in your living room, except we have decohered from them. We're no longer in tune with them. We don't vibrate with them. Therefore, our universe is tuned to one frequency, right. our universe. But it means that probably there are other parallel universes in your living room. And believe it or not, this is called modern physics. Now, we don't like to tell chemistry students and first-year students uh, the idea of parallel worlds because it would upset them. <laughs> you know, they might go crying, you know, crying to their mother. But hey, get used to it. This is the modern interpretation of the quantum theory that many worlds represents reality.